Hey, good morning, Pastor Art Battle. I'm so excited to be able to get this word to you. I want to thank my entire GCDC family, definitely for tuning in, for everybody who's watching uh, According to God's Good and Perfect Will. I want to give this powerful word that God uh, has blessed me to uh, kind of be gripped by for a while with the things that we're being blessed to be able to go through with COVID-19 and the coronavirus. I do pray that everybody had an awesome uh, Holy Week, that you had a, an amazing Resurrection Sunday, and that God is blessing you this Sunday uh, to be able to hear a powerful word from him according to his good and perfect will so with that being said what i want to do is always open with a word of prayer uh, according to how god will bless so if you will please bow your head and close your eyes and go to the throne of god with me father right now i come as your humble servant asking that you preach your powerful word to your people right in this moment God, that you would remove me from the eyesight and the earshot of your people, God, that we would hear directly from you, God, that you would uh, allow your voice to be poured through this earth and vessel, God. I plead and I ask according to uh, how good and perfect you are. But God, I also ask that every person who is watching that we will receive this word with the power in which you will give it. God, that it will change our very existence and God, that it will uh, get us on a path, God, to be able to do the things that this word is going to be able to tell us to do. God, that you are a God who will heal your land, that you will heal our land according to how you will heal us. But God, there are things that we need to do as your people. And God, I ask right now that you speak directly to your people at this time, just as you spoke to the people in Solomon's day. So I ask right now, God, that you preach this word with power, that you allow us to have hearts that will receive this word. And God, that you will not just make us receivers of the word, but doers of the word according to your good and perfect will. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Are you ready for the word? God is blessed over a period of time for me to be in a space looking at all the things that God is blessing us to endure with this uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic, global pandemic that we're dealing with. And there's been a scripture verse that has really sat in my spirit for a long period of time. And God has released me to be able to preach this message today. And I pray that God blesses you immensely by what it is that he's going to share with us as a loving father who wants his people to always be in right relationship with him. And so the title of this particular sermon is a very simple title. And it's a request. It's a plea unto almighty God. And it's something that's not just something that we should be praying right at this time, but it's something that we should be praying for all time that we're asking God very simply a very simple phrase. God, heal our land. That at this time, globally, we now have a level of connection with our brothers and sisters everywhere. That we're going through something that should hopefully humble us and put us in a position where we begin to realize the awesomeness and the power of Almighty God to be able to heal on a global perspective. But that we would ask God, the creator of the universe, the creator of all mankind, the creator of all things good, the creator who put us on this planet to heal the very creation that he created. But there's some things that God is going to speak to us in these verses that I pray you will receive, that I pray you will be encouraged by, that I pray you will actually put into practice because each and every one of us, God is calling on us to cry out to him to heal our land. And it's not just the healing of the aspects of the coronavirus that I'm talking about. It's not just the immediacy of asking God to heal so that way we don't have to die off via COVID-19. I'm asking God to heal all the fractures, all the, all the things that have gone wrong, the sinful behaviors that we as his people, we as a country, that we as a globe have done, that we haven't taken care of the things that he has entrusted into us. God, that there are things that we have done over centuries or over time, God, that we as your people have not begged you, have not asked have not forgiven have not gone and repented and turned back to you God that there are some things that you want to heal that's just not the physical but the spiritual and the emotional and the relational and even God the financial God that you'll step into all of those situations and you'll provide a healing God that all your people need globally God for generations to come after us and God that you are sharing your word that you told the wisest man that you created on to walk this planet, God, that you shared with him that there's some things that we were going to face. But it would only be in doing the things that you're going to share with us in this message, God, that you are going to heal the land that you created, the land that we inhabit. God, the generations before and the generations that will come after, God, that you can provide a generational blessing and a healing according to your good and perfect will. God, we stand knowing that that could already be done. 
But God, we also know that we got to play our part. There's just some things, God, that in this word you're going to share that we need to be able to do. God, that we got to be able to stand firm and live this life the way that you want us to live it. And so, God, with that being said, I want to look at the scripture verses where you're going to give us instruction. And so in 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, starting at the 11th verse in the, new, in the uh, new International Version, God is going to begin to speak to us. And I just want you to receive this into your spirit as God will preach this word with the power that only he can. In 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter and the 11th verse, in the NIV it says, When Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace, and has succeeded in carrying out all he had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord and in his own palace. In verse 12, it says, the Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. I want to stay there for just a second. There's an aspect of where the wisest man in the world, Solomon, is sharing in verse 11. He says, he had finished in these chronicles is saying he had finished the temple of the Lord, that the things that were required for him to actually be able to do in constructing the temple of God, he had done those things. He had completed the temple of the Lord and the royal palace. So he had done everything according to God's will. And then he had not just done it. He had succeeded in carrying out all he had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord and in his own palace. So when he had completed the things that God had instructed him, when he had completed the things that God would bless him to be able to do in the building of the temple and even his own palace, it's then in verse 12 where he says, the Lord then appears to him at night. The wisest man, richest king, things of that nature, who God had blessed. Second king, descendant of David, bloodline of Jesus. He then speaks to him and he says, it says, the Lord appeared to him at night. And he says to him something very simple. He says, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. Now, we know that Solomon was in right relationship with God. He had done many sacrifices. The people earlier in these scripture verses were praising Almighty God, just giving him all kind of praise, honor, and glory. It was huge. The sacrifices, the festivals that they had just celebrated, things of that nature. And then it gets to this place where God is going to speak very quietly and definitively unto Solomon. He actually appears to him at night. And he's going to share this very simple prayer. He says, he says I've heard your prayer. And, and, and if anybody that watched the foundation of the kingdom, you'll begin to realize that when you live righteously, God's ears are now open to your prayers. And so what this says is it says that he had heard Solomon's prayers. And not just that he heard his prayers. He did more than just hear his prayers. He actually chose the temple that Solomon had constructed in honor and praise and giving God glory. He had chose that temple for himself. He says, I, he says, I have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifice. That means that God said that I am pleased, Solomon, with what it is that you have done, what you have accomplished, what you have succeeded in doing. I am, I am pleased, Solomon, in the aspect that you follow what it was that I provided, that you did it the way that I wanted you to do it, that this temple has been built to give me praise, honor, and glory. And I have chosen this temple, mm. this place for myself as a temple for sacrifice. And I stay here with me as God preaches this word according to how he can only preach it. Now, we know that for us, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to put yourself in a space and ask yourself, allow God to speak to you right in this moment where he hears your prayers. Where you've been praying to Almighty God, where you've been asking God for, to bless, where you've been asking God to heal, where you've been asking God to do something special in your life that he's heard your prayer. And then he points to you and he says, I've chosen you. I've chosen your temple. I've chosen you, my daughter. I've chosen you, my son. I've chosen you, my child, as the place where I am going to do what? I'm going to have you as my temple for all sacrifices because you are to be what? A living sacrifice unto me. So I've chosen you 
for this regard. I've chosen you in the place as the place that I want to reside. I've chosen you as a place that my Holy Spirit is going to dwell. I've chosen you as a place that the blood is going to cover you according to how my son gave his life for you. I've chosen you as the one who will inherit all the good things that I have for my children who know me. I've chosen you because you live right and you are righteous and you do not have a tongue that lies and you do not have a spirit that, that seeks evil and to revive. I've chosen you as the one that will do all the good and perfect things that I have blessed and empowered you to be able to do. I've chosen you as the one that will be the remnant that will carry forward the bloodstained banner and do the thing. I get happy. So listen to me for just a second. He says, I've heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. Then we get into verse 13. In verse 13, he says something here, and this is for us today. He says very definitively to Solomon, the wisest man. He says, now, Solomon, there's going to be some stuff that my people are going to have to face. There's going to be some things, Solomon, that will not be within their control. There's going to be some things, Solomon, that may happen to them. And as a result, I need you to understand, Solomon, that when these things take place, they are not to lose their faith. They're not to lose heart. They're not to lose relational connection with me. Because he says here, he says, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, now, I want you to stay in this place for just a second. What he's sharing right now is just some calamities that God may bless and God may use to be able to bring us back into right relationship with him. That there may be some things that may be allowed, and he's speaking to Solomon, and he's telling, he's telling Solomon, he says, Solomon, there's some things that might happen, but this is the thing that I want you to do. I want you to understand that I am always going to be the source by which my people can return unto me. He says, there's going to be some things, Solomon. Every day ain't going to be a good day. Every day is not going to be something that you're just going to, you're not going to have to face certain tragedies or certain things that are going to take place. I need you, Solomon, to understand that there might be some hard times, Solomon, but when those hard times come, I need you to understand that it might be me who shuts up the heaven, Solomon. It might be me who just as when, when I, I bless, I bless in certain ways for the heavens to be shut up and there won't be any rain. When the prophet Elijah prayed unto God and there was no rain for a period of years, and as a result, we need to understand that God could choose to shut up whatever heavens he wants to, and there won't be any rain. And then God could command, and we know that this happened with the children of Israel when they were in Egypt, that as a result, he could command locusts to devour the land. And even at that same time, he sent plagues among his people. Why? To be able to bless them, to bring them back in the right relationship, to help them understand that he is a God who sits high and looks low. And as a result, sometimes we'll think that the bad things that take place are not meant to bring us in the right relationship with God, but it's the very negative things. It's the very things that are trying. It's the very tragedies. It's the calamities. It's the things that might take place where we got to have even a more secure footing in Almighty God. Well, you got to say to yourself that my father will never leave me or forsake me, and even though I am going through I'm still going to praise his holy name. And so when we get here, he says, I might. He said, I, I shut up the heavens. He says, when these things happen, when the heavens are shut up, when, when he commands locusts to devour the land or send a plague among his people. Now, this is where we need to, this is where we need to focus in verse 14. He says, those things are going to happen. Because when God says certain things are going to happen, they're going to happen because God is truth. And there ain't no lies or deceit in God. So when he says those things are going to take place, they're going to take place. But then he says that there's a part that we play in all of this. That there's a role that we serve. That there's a place that God wants his people to have a firm footing in him. If we really want the land to be healed, if we're asking God to heal this land, to heal our land. Then he, put, he hits us with this phrase, and this is huge. There's two letters in this word at the beginning that all of us should be able to be able to say to ourselves that this word, this two-letter word is so huge because it calls for each of us, and it calls for us as God's people, as, as believers, to be able to do this thing. It says, if my people, stay here, well, I'm about to shout. He says, here. If my people, the my is possessive, the if is if you're going to do it or not. But he says, if my people, if the people I possess, if the people who are of mine, if the people who are in right relationship with me, if the people who proclaim that I am their God, if my people, now stay here. Then he says, if my people 
who are called by my name. Stay here. I love God for this. You should know the name of God. And when you hear that you have been called by the name of God, you should stand up, shout, praise almighty God, but be steadfast, ready to do his good and perfect will. When you know that you've been called, when you know that God has his name on your life, when you know that you're covered by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it should change your perspective that when Jesus tells you to rise, you rise. Stay here. Ah, got to stay in this space. There's a show that I watch and it says all rise when a judge comes into a courtroom there's a bailiff that stands towards the towards the desk or where the judge may be at and, and when the judge walks in before the judge even sits down him or her at their seat what happens is, is the bailiff says all rise and the reason that they all rise is for honor of that particular judge is to show that they are willing to be obedient to what's going to happen in that courtroom there should be a place where every single believer rises when God calls your name and when you're called by his name you should rise up according to, man, I'm happy right now. You should rise up according to how he is blessing you right in this moment. This is a time. This is the time for God's people to rise up because we are called by his name. Now watch this. I don't want you to think that this is for all the unbelievers that are out there. It says that if my people who are called by my name, watch this. There are times that my parents used to call me when I needed to come into the house after I was playing. When they called out Artie, I knew that I needed to come to the house because I understood what my name was. But if they said battle family, then that was all of us had to go. See, there should be an aspect of what God calls his people when he says, my children who are called by my name, at that point, everybody that's a child of God should stand up. We should all turn around. We should look and say, God, what do you want us to do? And then he says this, but this is what I want you to do. He says, there's an if here, if my people who are called by my name, what does that mean? Not everybody is going to proclaim that they are God's child. Not everybody is going to turn and, and look and say, God, I'm going to rise up and do what you want me to do. Not everybody who claims that they are a believer is going to be a believer in the time that the believers are supposed to stand up. But this is the way he wants us to stand. He says, if my people who are called by my name, and there's some things that he wants us to do, he said, will humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I'm going to stay right there before I run to the end. There's an aspect in this where he says that there is a way to get to healing the land that he's blessed us to be on. And it's not just the healing from the coronavirus or COVID-19. It's the healing of the racism, the sexism, the discrimination, all the things that we did, the economic depravity, all the stuff that we sought in greed, all the things that we have done for generations before and generations to still come. That there's some things that are schisms and, and things that are dividing and, and ageism as a whole whole lot of stuff that we need to be healed from. And God says, the first thing you got to do is you got to humble yourself. You got to realize that he is God and God alone, that we are just mere walking dust. And as a result, God can do whatever he wants, however he want to do it. But we as his people got to humble ourselves. You can't think that you know everything. As a result, there are individuals who are trying to come up with vaccines and we haven't done that yet. And they're working hard to understand all of that. But God is a God who knows all, sees all and can do all. And as a result, we got to humble ourselves and say, God, we are not worthy. God, we don't we don't know what the answers are. God, we can't do it in our own power but we can do it according to you if we humble ourselves you can't be high minded serving a God who's always going to be higher than you you got to realize that you got to stay in your place and do the things that God will be able to do in your life through the humility that you show he will elevate those who are humble and he will take down those who are proud it says humble ourselves if we will what humble ourselves will humble themselves and watch this and pray you can't just humble yourself and then not talk to God. And all prayer is is talking to God, crying out to God, saying to God, God, only you can do it. Father, bless as only you can. God, touch and heal your people. God, heal their finances. Heal them spiritually. Heal them emotionally. God, help those who are dealing with depression. God, help those who are getting restless in their home. God, help them to obey the aspects of the stay-at-home order. God, bless the vaccine. God, we got to talk to you daily, second by second. God, we should be crying out to you for you to be able to do things that we can't do on our own. But God, the things that we can do on our own, we need to do those in your power according to your will. So we need to be prayerful. Praying to God daily, collectively, one-minded in how it is that we're going to handle stuff. So we need to pray. And then watch this. We are not just humbling ourselves. We are not just praying. We are seeking God's face. That you are seeking a deeper relationship with God every single day. 
Every second that you're alive, you should be seeking his face. And his face is not hidden from us in the way that we might think. We need to seek his face in his word. We need to seek his face in his will. We need to seek his face in his people. We need to seek his face in our relational connection to him. We need to seek his face in how we're going to serve him. We need to seek his face in all that is in prayer and fasting and all that kind of stuff. We need to seek God's face. Not just his hand, but his face. Now, watch this. What that means is we need to be in deeper relationship than just an extension of a hand. You need to be close to God. See, when you can get face to face with somebody, it changes the relational connection that you have with that person. Oh, I love God for this. And I want you to stay in this moment when I was blessed to be able to teach the foundation of the kingdom. There was an aspect of what we was looking at. You don't want God's face to be turned against you and when you're doing evil. But when you're seeking his face and you're doing good, what that means is that you can seek his face and get closer to him. So you need to seek his face. And then watch this. And then this is the thing. So you've humbled yourself. We've humbled ourselves. We're praying out to God earnestly. We're seeking his face. But now we got to do something. We got to turn. What that means is, and I want you to watch this, I'm going to turn real quick so that way y'all can see this. See, some of us at the end of the day, we don't realize that turning is necessary. That at the end of the day, God wants you to turn. What he wants you to do is he wants you to turn from something to something. What he wants you to do is to turn from your wicked ways. He wants you to stop doing the wicked things. He wants you to stop doing the evil things. He wants you to stop turning. He wants you to stop being facing and facing the evil things and the wicked things that you're doing. He said, I want you to turn away from that. I want you to do a 180 degree turn. I want you to turn and understand that I don't want you facing wickedness no more. I want you to face righteousness and that can only be found in me. I need you seeking my face because if you humble yourself, if you pray, if you seek my face, you eventually are going to turn. Why are you going to turn? Because I am the one who is bringing you from pride to humility. I am the one who is bringing you from lack of connection and praying to praying. I'm the one that and when you seek my face, you're eventually going to have to turn away from evil because I am not evil and I am not wicked. I am only good, truthful, honest, and righteous. So as a result, if you seek my face, you're going to have to turn from the evil things because I am not a part of evil. I am not a part of wicked. I am only a part of good. Now stay here. If we do those things, if we humble ourselves, if we pray, if we seek then his face and turn from our wicked ways, watch what's going to happen. Then he says, I will hear what from heaven? That God hears the righteous. And the prayers of a righteous man, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. We want much to happen in this pandemic. We want much to happen in this season. We want much to happen both now and forevermore. So as a result, we need to do what? We need God to hear from heaven. And then when he hears from heaven, he's going to do what? Forgive their sin. This is the part. I got to say this is God is laying this on my heart. There's an aspect for forgiveness of sin that all of us individually got to do. And then there should be some corporate forgiveness of sin that we should be doing as a people, as a country, as a nation, as a globe. There's some stuff that we need to ask God for forgiveness because we have sinned. We have polluted the land that he has blessed us to be able to have. We have treated our brothers and sisters way less. Slavery and all of us, that kind of stuff, we treated them way less than the children of God that God has already created and anointed them to be. We have treated individuals who are poor like they are less than the awesome creatures of God that God has blessed them to be able to be. We have treated individuals different when they've gotten older. We've treated individuals who have disabilities. We've done a whole lot of stuff that's sinful unto God and we need to ask God to forgive us for our sins not just what we've done individually but I need God to be able to bless me and I need him, I need to ask him to forgive me for what I've done that sinned against him. I need to ask him for forgiveness for the sins that my family has committed and maybe the generations that have come before me but also for the communities that I've been a part of for the nation that I'm a, I'm a part of that the world the world system as a result and the things from a global perspective that we have done we need to ask God to forgive us for our sins because it's in the forgiveness that we get to the part that healing will take place every generation God is speaking to every generation through these scriptures that he's speaking through Solomon. He's speaking to us right now. He's saying that my people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and watch this and will heal their land. 
See, the healing take place at the end when we've done, done the things that God has commanded us to do. And I believe real talk, because I'm talking to God's people, I believe that we want to hear from heaven, but we don't want to ask for forgiveness. So how are we going to get healing when we ain't going to ask for forgiveness? And some of us, we so high-minded that we don't want to humble ourselves. We want to say we could do it on our own. Well, you can't do it on your own. For centuries, for thousands of years, people haven't been able to do it on their own. He tells the wisest man that when plagues come, that when the locusts devour, that when the heavens get shut up and there is no rain, this is the way back to me. God's word will always give you a way back to him. But we want to be healed, God heal our land, that we need to humble ourselves, that we need to pray, that we need to seek his face, that we need to turn from our wicked ways. And then, what, then he's going to hear us, and then he will forgive us our sins, and then the land will be healed. When we get to verse 15, he says, Now my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart will always be there. Now stay here as I get ready to close. There's a space right here where you got to personalize this thing in verses 15 and 16 that you got to say to yourself that if my people who are called by my name are going to humble themselves and pray and then turn from their, you know, seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, then the healing is going to take place because he's going to hear us and then he's going to forgive us the sins. But then he says that his eyes are going to be open and his ears are going to be attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Remember, I ain't talking about just Solomon's temple. I'm talking about you as the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's going to hear the prayers. His eyes are going to be open to you. His prayers are going to be heard by you because his ears are going to be attentive to all oh, love God for this. I got to drop this as God is blessing. There's an aspect here where he says his eyes going to be open and watch this and his ears are going to be attentive. Have you ever talked to somebody who's been so busy doing something else that they ain't looking at you and they ain't hearing you? God said, I ain't that person. What I'm going to do when you do the things that I'm saying, he says, then my eyes are going to be open, which goes going to be dead on you. Then my ears are going to be attentive, which means I'm just listening to you and I'm listening to what the prayers that you're offering in this temple. Not the temple that Solomon built, but the temple, and that's what he's talking about there. But I'm talking about the temple that you are, where the Holy Spirit resides on the inside of you. That when God's temples, when we as his people do the things that he is prescribing and telling us in his word that he wants us to do, what will happen is, is his eyes are going to be open and his ears attentive to the prayers that we're offering in this place. And the temples that we are. Then what will happen is it says he's chosen and consecrated this temple. Now watch this. I'm going to personalize it for you. He's chosen and consecrated you so that his name may be on you forever. And his eyes and heart will always be there for you. Watch this. Jesus says he'll never leave us or forsake us. He said, I'm going to give you the comfort. I'm going to send back the paraclete. I'm going to send back the advocate who's going to rest and rule and abide on the inside of you. There's some power in this message that if we live the right way and do the right things, God will heal the land where we will humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. There's an aspect where all of us individually, if we really love one another and we love God like we say, then we got to individually do this thing so collectively we can receive the blessing of what it is that God will do in the healing of his land. So I want to close with a very simple statement that we started with. I want to ask God on behalf of all the people who are watching, all the people who are connected to GCDC, every single disciple, every single believer around the world, around the globe, I'm going to ask God this very simple aspect from the depths of my spirit, from the depths of where I'm at, as one of his children, I'm asking God, God, heal our land. <sighs> right now, I just want to pray as God will bless, as only he could bless. Father, right now, I ask that you heal the land of your people. God, humble us. God, allow us to be prayerful unto you. God, let us seek your face in everything that we do. Father, and then bless us to turn from our wicked ways. So that way, God, you will hear from heaven, and you will forgive our sins. And then, God, you will heal our land. Seal this message, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit. And bless your people to do what you want us to do, according to your word, your will, and your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So with that being said, what I want to do is always make sure that anybody that's watching, that you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for yourself, that the offer of salvation is very simple. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is the time for you to get saved right now. There's no better time than the present. So even if you're saying that, saying that at home, if you don't know Jesus for yourself in the privacy of your home, all you got to do very simply is just confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. It's simple. Just say, Jesus is Lord over my life. And then and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you're saved right in that moment. I pray that you are saved right now. The next thing is repent and return. Very simply in Luke 15, 7, it says, in the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. What that means is God is into his lost sheep. He wants us to repent and return to him. He wants us to have right relationship with him. So I pray right now that you get in right relationship with God because he loves you unconditionally. That it, There's no greater love than you could have than to lay down your life for your friend. And Jesus laid down his life for you. So all you got to do is repent and return unto him. The aspect of baptism, that's a command that comes from the Great Commission. It says in Matthew 28, 19, Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So I pray that once the pandemic is, is kind of uh, ceased, according to how God will bless, that we can get back to baptizing God's people so they can put on the symbolic death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The last thing, very simply, if you want to be a part of uh, GCDC, Gethsemane Christian Disciples of Church, a huge blessing uh, to be able to have you become a part of our church family. We love you guys. Praying for all of our church family. Praying for all churches that are open in God's name. For those that have moved to doing things online. Uh, that God will bless as only he can to keep his people safe. So if you want to be a part of this household of faith, please uh, just reach out to me. Uh, you can uh, go to our website, gcdc.tv. You can send an email to uh, info at gcdc.tv uh, according to how it is that God will bless you to be able to send that. If you'd like to be a part of our household of faith, we would love to have you. I thank God for all the disciples, for all the leaders that are part of GCDC, how God is blessing us to even stay connected uh, electronically and online as only God can bless so with that being said, what I want us to do is we're going to move into offering quickly. Uh, and I pray that I thank God for all the individuals who have been sending their offering in via mail. I have received all the offerings that you have sent uh, via mail. So I thank God for everybody who's been sending those in. I thank those who have been doing stuff via PayPal and Cash App uh, and GiveLify. Keep giving back into God's house. For everybody who's a part of another church and you support us uh, just by watching us online, please make sure that you're sowing back into your household of faith as well. God wants us to continue giving in the sense of, in the ways in which he will only bless us to be able to give. So keep giving to your household of faith. Bless the individuals. Bless that house. Give your tithes into the storehouse so there may be meat in God's house. Say it the Lord of hosts. That's in Malachi 3. So you need to make sure that God blesses you according to his good and perfect will. You are a blessing to God's people by continuing to give in the time frame that he's blessing you to be able to give. So you can give your tithes and offerings. You can go to gcdc.tv you can give online. As I said before, you can mail your check or money order. You can make it out to GCDC and then mail it in to GCDC, P.O. Box 595, Holland, Ohio, zip 43528. You can even do debit card. Uh, call my wife, Jamil, Lady Jamil Battle at 419-350-1989. Uh, she'll be more than happy to uh, take your offering via debit card. People who've done via Cash App, thank you so much. PayPal, thank you so much. Givelify, thank you so much. Mail, thank you so much. Debit card, thank you so much. Just I'm praising God and thanking him for the blessing that you've continued to be to this household of faith uh, at, at this time. And so as a result, what I want us to do, we're still going to do our uh, scripture verses. So I'll do Matthew 6, 33 out of the King James version and you can repeat after me but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you and then we'll do Matthew 6 33 from the Greek Zetet the Proton Tain Basileon Tutheu Kai Tain Dikaiusune Autu Kai Tauta Ponta Prostatesitai Umin and then last is uh, out of the Spanish, which is Mas Buscat, Primeramente, El Reino, De Dios, E Su Justicia, E Todas Estas Cosas As Saran 
And I didn't eat us. I want to thank my man Steve for uh, saying that with me. The Lord is blessed for sure. I thank God for him and all that he's doing. Uh, I thank God for all the disciples. I thank you for being able to give your offering according to God's good and perfect will. So as a result, now what I want to do is I want to pray over the offering. So if everybody could bow their heads, close their eyes. Father, I thank you so much for this time to be able to sow back into your kingdom through the gift of giving our tithes and offerings back to you. God, I ask that you take this tithe, this offering, whatever it is that your son or daughter has provided unto you, God, and I ask that you multiply it a thousandfold. God, I ask right now that you use it for the edification and the building of your kingdom. God, I ask that you use it to be able to bless the widows and the orphans. God, I ask that you use it to be able to give you praise, honor, and glory. God, I ask that you multiply it so this household of faith can continue to be good stewards over what you've given, God, that we may be a generational blessing to all those who may come and be a part of this household of faith. And God, I ask that you bless every offering, every tithe that's been given in every household of faith globally, God, that you bless it, that you anoint it, that you increase it God that you multiply it a thousandfold to be used to edify and build your kingdom and bless your people in Jesus holy name we pray and God I also ask that you bless those who didn't have it God that the next time they're given an opportunity that you bless them to be able to give in Jesus holy name we pray amen so with that being said, man, I thank you guys so much. Uh, you guys are such a blessing. I'm thankful that we're staying connected and the word of God is going out online. I want you to also know that you can always tune in on uh, and check us out on Thursdays. We have a prayer call actually on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Uh, so there's information on our website at gcdc.tv on that. We're taking prayer requests and we come together and we pray in the power of prayer. We know that where two or more are gathered, Jesus, that God is in the midst. So as a result, we want to make sure that we're gathered on Wednesdays, getting our prayer requests to God, getting the prayer requests out. We do prayer request notes that we send around to everybody as well. Uh, so that way we're continuing to pray one for another. The other thing is uh, we want to make sure that people are getting together for discipleship training. That's at 7 o'clock on Thursdays from 7 to about 8.30. That's also on our website at gcdc.tv. Please always make sure on Sundays, Lord willing, that you tune in uh, at 9 o'clock to be able to watch uh, Foundation of the Kingdom and then at 10.30 to be able to uh, hear and receive the Word of God preached uh, according to God's good and perfect will. Uh, so you can check those out on YouTube and on Facebook Live. So I thank you so much as only God can bless. I'm going to end with a closing prayer uh, as only God can bless us to be able to end. Father, seal this entire service by the power of your word, by the power of your Holy Spirit, and the power of your will. God, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to hear a word from you. God, we ask that you give us an active heart, an active mind, an active spirit to be able to live out the words that you have preached unto us today. God, keep your people and heal your land of every single thing that ails us. God, we ask all these and other blessings. In our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Love you one another.